So chapter 12 is our is our last chapter and it has to do with finding the cash flows that we've always just been given in the previous problems to find the net present value and also we're going to look at risk analysis for these cash flows that we've estimated. So some of the major objectives for this chapter are for you to be able to identify the relevant cash flows that should and should not be included in a capital budgeting analysis. And then second, you need to be able to estimate a project's relevant cash flows and put them into a timeline format that can be used to calculate a project's MPV, IRR, MIRR, and other capital budgeting um, metrics. And then third, you need to be able to explain how risk is measured and use this measure to adjust the firm's weighted average cost of capital to account for differential project riskiness. And then finally, you need to be able to discuss how some projects can be altered after they had been accepted and how these alterations could change a project's cash flows and therefore change its realized net present value. So we're given a list of inf information for the project that we're going to analyze and the cash flows that we're going to come up with. And so you've got depreciable cost for the equipment and shipping and installation. And if we added those two, uh, 200,000 plus 40,000, we would get $240,000 and that's our depreciable basis. And we'll d figure out what they tell us the, the depreciation schedule is. And then we'll look at the changes in net operating working capital. And so far we see that inventories will have to increase by $25,000. Um, so we're going to have more raw materials coming in that we're going to be using to create product. And then accounts payable will rise by $5,000 because we will be owing other businesses or suppliers money. And so our accounts payable will go up. And then the effect on operations is that we'll have new sales of 100,000 units per year and they will earn $2 per unit. And then the variable costs that we need to be aware of are 60% of sales. For the life of the project, its economic life is four years and the depreciable basis that we'll use is the maker's three-year class and they'll give us those percentages and I believe they're located um, in this chapter or in the back of the book for you to look up different types of makers. Um, depreciation schedules and then this project has a salvage value of $25,000 after four years so you could sell the equipment and you could get $25,000. The tax rate we've got is 40% and then the weighted average cost of capital is 10%. So what we're going to do is figure out our initial costs this is kind of like the overview of what we need to do get operating cash flows all the way through year four and then we'll have the terminal cash flows and this consists of the return of net operating working capital and after-tax salvage value and then again back at the initial cost that's like the initial buying of the equipment and the installation and the increase in net operating working capital and then when we add all of these up have the final cash flow series where we have that would this is what we would put in our calculator cash flow 0 cash flow 1 2 3 4 so the first step is to find the increase in net operating working capital and we remember that there's inventories would go up by 25,000 and accounts payable would go up by 5,000 so the change in net operating working capital is the difference between the two. So 25 minus 5 gives us 20,000. And then we've got our initial costs in the first year, or time zero. We've got the equipment costs and installation. So this would be our increase in capital expenditures of 240,000. 
and then we also have what we just figured out the increase in net operating working capital of 20,000 and so our free cash flow at time zero would be negative 260,000 then we need to figure out depreciation um, so the makers table for a four-year depreciation schedule or the three-year schedule it goes over four years is based on these percentages and then we multiply at times the basis which is the 240,000 and we see what our depreciation would be each year and we'll see where we use that in just a second so we set up our big um, table where we've got our revenues and since it was one hundred dollars or I'm sorry a hundred thousand units at two dollars per unit and these are in thousands of dollars then this is two hundred thousand dollars a year in revenue operating costs they said were sixty percent of two hundred thousand so sixty percent of that is a hundred and twenty thousand and then we put in our depreciation expense that we calculated on the previous slide and then we get our earnings before interest and taxes on this row four and then we take out taxes so taxes are 40 percent and then we have got um, our earnings before interest and taxes basically times one minus the tax rate which is the same thing as saying um, like um, an earnings before interest only but this is the only thing that matters because we're not going to include interest expense here so we've got that so after we've taken out taxes and then because depreciation was a non-cash charge we just add that back so all of the numbers that we had up here on row three we're adding back down here and then we've got our you know our after-tax earnings and then we've got depreciation added together for our operating cash flows the 79.7 91.2 down on this last row and then there was one final thing that we needed to work on and that's because they told us the machinery um, equipment would have a salvage value of twenty five thousand dollars and so since the book value at year four is zero because we've depreciated everything down to zero for the equipment and installation this twenty five thousand dollars is like a gain and so we have to pay taxes on a gain and taxes are forty percent so forty percent of twenty five thousand dollars is ten thousand dollars and so that leaves us with an after-tax salvage value of fifteen thousand and then that net operating working capital that we subtracted in the very beginning at time zero we just take that exact number and we add it back at the final year four and the reason why is we assume that we get a return of all that net operating working capital that we sell all the inventories um, that we pay off the accounts payable and that everything goes back to the way it originally was so we add those two and we get a terminal cash flow here of 35,000 and if we were to look at the total for free cash flow for keeping in mind remember we got on this previous slide 54.7 so 54.7 plus our terminal cash flow gives us our total cash flow of 89,700